So we have our calculator. It has orange operator buttons. But today is Halloween, so why don't we do something fun? Let's replace the orange operator buttons with orange pumpkins. I already put a pumpkin image into the public folder. Let's see if we can write a test that confirms that the buttons do have an orange pumpkin background. We can update the test in the buttons and we can spy on getting the pumpkin image. And since we don't know how it's going to be downloaded, let's use a wildcard. We'll give it an alias pumpkin. All right, let's see. Okay, we have an alias set up. And the first failing will be waiting for that pumpkin alias. Okay, because no call happens, unfortunately, uh, the test uh, fails. Even before we fix this, why don't we check that status code? Should be either 200 or 304, depending on the first time the browser sees it or if it already has seen it. All right. Let's modify the styles. Right now, the operator buttons have the background color and we can change this and we can say, okay, in addition to the color, we also will use pumpkin image as the background and we'll remove color. Okay, so now we have those pumpkins and we don't want to have um, the actual orange, why don't we set it to RGBA transparent color. Okay, so we can see just the pumpkin and nothing else. Perfect, this works. Uh, why don't we confirm that the pumpkin is set as a background URL for this image, I mean for this button. And the way we can do it inside the test, we can say, okay, so this contains a button like plus for example and we'll give it an alias and we can say should have css to get the computed css and the property we're interested is background image and this yields the actual value so we can match it to the part of url that we know perfect so we know it downloads an image and that the operator button sets the background image to the pumpkin URL. Uh, what happens when we hover? Okay, why don't we try hovering over uh, the pumpkin button so we can say get the same plus element by Alice and we can do real hover and we're using Cypress real events to implement real hover. So Right now, nothing happens. Notice for the regular buttons, we make them lighter on hover. For this kind of button, we want to make it slightly larger. So it kind of zooms in. And we want to confirm that it becomes larger. So we need the width of a button before we hover and after. And the way we can do it is this. Again, should have CSS width. Um, this is a string. So let's see, we can print it right here. Let's see. Um, sometimes a browser doesn't download the image if it's already cached. So let me open. What? Again? Oh, yeah, because we need the image, not a string. Okay, so right now it's 99.99 .99 because it's a layout, it's computed, it's fractional. So we can confirm by parsing it into actual number and, you know, it should be close to assertion 100 up to let's say one tenth of a pixel. So this is the initial width and we can pass it to a site callback where we can do the hover. And once we hover, then we do the same thing. We get the width, parse it to a number and it should be greater than the width initially. Okay, so right now they're equal because we haven't modified the styles. So now that we have a test, we can go to our styles and say, okay, once someone hovers, just maybe increase uh, the scale by 5%. Okay, and now our button has a width of 105 pixels instead of 100. 
and you can see it if I hover over each operator button you see how it becomes slightly larger to give a user a visual cue. Alright, so this was the Halloween lesson. We replaced boring orange circle with a pumpkin image and we confirm that the image is downloaded, that it's applied as background image CSS property and we hovered and confirm that the button becomes slightly larger when the user hovers.